Mr. Director, I, I can't thank you enough for being willing to do this job after being CIA director. Uh, I just think the President's put together an A-plus national security team, and you're one of the linchpins of that. So now some hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned to Senator Nelson that you think the killing of bin Laden has created some momentum. I couldn't agree with you more what to do with that momentum. The statement to me that it makes, there's no place you can go and no passage of time that will protect you from justice being delivered by the American people. I think that is a statement that needs to be made, but we also need to make another statement. Uh, you can count on America. So my general belief is that this war is more complicated than killing terrorists. Do you agree with that? Yes. And it's, we've got to make an equal investment in helping those who would fight the terrorists in their own backyard and be our partner. Don't you agree that takes more time, that's more costly, and in many ways more deadly to build up partnerships than just killing an individual? Uh, it absolutely does take more time because it's... Do you uh, agree with me that payoff is much more enormous if we can get it right? Correct. What happens if we lose in Afghanistan? I think uh, if we lose in Afghanistan, uh, we, we not only uh, uh, create... Uh, another safe haven for al-Qaeda uh, and for their militant allies, but I think uh, the world becomes uh, a, a, much more, uh, a much more threatened place uh, because of uh, that loss, particularly in that region. I can't agree with you more. I think that's absolutely dead on. What do I tell a family in South Carolina who's lost a son or daughter in Afghanistan to an IED that we know was made in Pakistan and we can't do a damn thing about it? What do I tell them? I, you know, I, I've, uh, I think that that is one of those uh, situations that uh, is, is frustrating and angering. Uh, and um, Would you agree with one, me? One where I think uh, it, it, we have got to say to that family that uh, we are not just walking away from that responsibility, but we're continuing to put pressure on those, uh, those countries that are involved with that. I couldn't agree with you more, and I don't think, quite frankly, we're going to be able to sustain our efforts in Afghanistan until we deal with the safe havens. And I trust you and uh, General Petraeus to deliver that message. But on behalf of the people of South Carolina, and I think most members of this committee, if you're listening in Pakistan, you need to choose, because it is in your interest to help fight people that would undermine Afghanistan as well as Pakistan. So I'm all in and winning in Afghanistan and doing what we need to do in Iraq, but Pakistan needs to get with the program one way or the other. Now, uh, the Pentagon itself, do you agree that the general system we have today to buy weapons is that the longer it takes to develop a weapon and the more it costs, the more the contractor makes? That's right. Isn't that kind of stupid? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, it really not is. for the contractor. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. yeah. I don't blame the contractor. <laughs> I blame us. So what if we did this? What if we said to contractors in the future, you're welcome to bid on major weapon systems, but why don't you share 25% of the development cost, and at the end of the day, uh, we're going to have a fixed price, not a cost plus, and if there are any overruns, you share in the overruns. Do you think that's a some idea to uh, at I think least. that's a suggestion worth looking at. Yeah, I think it is too. I think it would save us a lot of money. And one thing I'd like you to do is go back in the past, and if you had a cost-sharing arrangement, how much money would we have saved in the last 20 years if we'd had that arrangement versus the longer it takes, the more it costs, the more you make? So I think it's a way to save money uh, and, you know, actually get weapons done quicker. Uh, when it comes to Iraq, if the Iraqis ask us, to provide some troops in 2012. Secretary Gates says he thinks that would be smart. Do you think that would be smart to say yes? Yes. Okay, if uh, Secretary Gates, do you agree that he's got a pretty good view of what's going on in the world? Sure does. Uh, and he has served our country in an extraordinarily manner, I think. If he says three to 5,000 makes sense when it comes to July withdrawal in Afghanistan, would you give great consideration to that number? Well, I don't want to speculate on what the number is, but whatever uh, Secretary Gates recommends. Uh, well, that's what he said. It's not speculation. He said three to 5,000 would be a wise move in July. Would you at least consider that request? I, I think uh, Secretary Gates' position, General Petraeus' position, uh, obviously the President's position, all of that ought to be considered. But would you agree that between all of us, it probably Gates and Petraeus have the best view of anybody 
that I know of, if I had to pick two people to ask. They've got a pretty good view. I would put you in that list, too. Okay. <laughs> now, um, when it comes to Libya, if Gaddafi stays, what does that mean for our national security interest after we said he must go? I think it, uh, it impacts on our national security interests in the world if that happens. Do you think it kills the Arab Spring? I think it sends a terrible signal do you think it to tells, these other countries. Do you think it tells the Iranians that you, know, you really don't have to fear America when it comes to developing nuclear weapons? I think it tells them that uh, our, our word isn't worth very much if we're not willing to stick to it. Couldn't agree with you more. I can't wait to vote for you. Uh, now, <laughs> when, it, when it comes to detainees, if we captured someone tomorrow and say Yemen or Somalia, some of these failed states, uh, high value target, where would we put them as far as a jail? Do we have a jail available to, to our forces? Well, as you know, better probably better than anyone here. Uh, the uh, Can I tell you what uh, Admiral Mullen said when I asked him that question? Sure. We don't have an answer for that question. <laughs> Would probably, you help me come up with an answer? Probably not a bad answer. answer. Well, I think it's the <laughs> truth. But do you think that is a smart policy to be a nation without a jail in the war on terror? I, I think we have to have facilities to uh, be able to... Uh, uh, provide for detainment of these individuals. And, uh, that's that's and, clear. And to the committee, we don't. And we need to find one, and I think Guantanamo Bay is a good candidate because it's the only one left. Now, in 2014, everybody's focusing on a transition in Iraq, I'm, excuse me, Afghanistan. I think if we do this smartly, we can transition. But I am very interested in making sure, as you said, Afghanistan never becomes a failed state. <laughs> Secretary Gates said today, and he said in February when I asked him this question, um, that he believes that joint basing past 2014, where you would have American air power and counterterrorism units left behind in Afghanistan in a joint environment for training and counterterrorism, if the Afghans requested, would be a very good uh, policy for us. Do you generally agree with that? I think the President has made clear that uh, we, we have to make a, a long-term commitment to stability in that region, not just now, but in the future. Can I read you what Secretary Gates said to my question in sure. February about joint basing? A security agreement with Afghanistan that provided for a continuing relationship and some kind of joint facilities and so on for training for counterterrorism and so on beyond 2014, I think would be very much in our interest. Do you think that's a reasoned statement? I think that's worth looking at. I do too. Now, at the end of the day, you're taking over at a time when the budget for the nation has never been more out of whack. We're in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya. Uh, you've got a very uh, big agenda to fulfill. At the end of the day, we're a war-weary nation. What would you tell the American people in terms of the attitude we need to take as a country? Address their war weariness and tell them why, in your view, we should consider staying behind in Iraq, why we should consider a long-term relationship with Afghanistan. Why is it so important that we continue to stay in the fight after 10 years? Senator, it goes back to my father's statement. If you want to be free, you have to be secure. And the only way to ensure that security is to be able to establish uh, some kind of peaceful solution to these challenges abroad. Thank you very much, Senator Graham. Senator McCaskill. 